All summer, a group of experts and former military leaders have been playing war. They've been considering what would happen if the United States responded to a Chinese invasion of Taiwan. Mark Hansian is a senior advisor at the Center for Strategic and International Studies, which is hosting the Games. Mark, welcome. Thanks for having me on the show. So you've said this, quote, under most, though not all, scenarios, Taiwan can repel an invasion. Before we talk about what that would cost each side, what are the scenarios that Taiwan would not be able to repel that Chinese invasion? The scenarios uh, where uh, Taiwan could not repel an invasion are really very pessimistic. We have a what we call a base case, uh, and in that case, the U.S., China, or U.S., Taiwan, and usually Japan uh, can repel an invasion pretty handily, although again at pretty high cost. And even in pessimistic cases, they're able to repel an invasion, although the cost gets increasingly uh, high. In the most pessimistic cases, uh, the U.S. is late, for example, to respond, waiting you know, maybe a week or two. Uh, then the Taiwanese have a much more uh, difficult time. The costs to Taiwan and the U.S. would be huge. Spell those out for us. In most of the uh, iterations, the United States loses about 500 aircraft. In the most pessimistic ones, uh, that goes up to about 900 aircraft. Uh, often we lose uh, two carriers, maybe 20 to 30 uh, surface combatants, uh, but are able to maintain Taiwan as an autonomous uh, entity. So we succeed, but at extremely high cost. You're saying up to 900 U.S. aircraft <clears throat> loss. Why? Why so many? What, what would be happening at that time? The challenge is that the United States has to move its aircraft forward into places like Okinawa before it's established maritime and air dominance. In the past, in the last generation, we've been able to do that against the adversaries and be able to do it relatively quickly against the Chinese. It takes a lot of time. But we have to move forward in order to strike the Chinese fleet before the Chinese can establish themselves on Taiwan. So that means that these aircraft are operating forward, they're inside the Chinese missile envelope, and the Chinese missiles repeatedly attack them on the ground. In many of these scenarios, we lose 10 aircraft on the ground for every one we lose in air combat. Did the games indicate numbers of casualties that could be lost? We haven't calculated the specific number of personnel casualties, but you're into the tens of thousands. So it would be uh, a, sh a real shock to the United States and uh, a much higher uh, set of losses than we've experienced in the last generation. And this would happen within three or four weeks, not stretched over five or 10 years. Mark, how significant is Taiwan's military? <laughs> I, I know that they're being supported by the United States, but what impact would they have on, what did you see in the, in the games as far as what they could do in a potential conflict? Well, of course, the, the Taiwanese have uh, quite a strong military and they are improving it. Their ground forces are critical because that is their mechanism for um, holding uh, the Chinese invasion to a, a beachhead uh, and then eventually driving it off. Their air, uh, their air forces is also helpful, although it comes under uh, intense attack by uh, the Chinese. Its surface Navy uh, is extremely vulnerable. And one of the recommendations we make is that the, Chinese, that the Taiwanese should invest more heavily in what are called asymmetric capabilities, things like anti-ship missiles and mines uh, that would not be subject to uh, Chinese attack. Uh, obviously, the Chinese have been conducting military exercises around Taiwan. What does that indicate to you about their strategy? Well, there are two things we see. Right? First is they're being extremely aggressive. This last a round of exercises was more than we've seen in a long time. So that impresses on everyone that this is a real military threat. What we're also seeing is their use of missiles uh, that have uh, landed around uh, Taiwan. And that emphasizes also their missile capabilities, which in our war games play very heavily uh, and uh, damage U.S. Um, air forces and ships very heavily. Did you take Japan into consideration in, in the war games? How would they... Um, would they be involved at all? Uh, absolutely. J Japan is a critical player. Our base assumption is that Japan would allow the U.S. to use its bases in Japan, places like Okinawa, but would not actively participate unless the Chinese attack their homeland. In most cases, the Chinese do that to, take the ch uh, to get at the U.S. Uh, air operations. That brings the Chinese 
uh, the Japanese in. The use of their bases is critical. Their air forces uh, are also very uh, helpful, and their surface sh fleets uh, can also be helpful, although they're also very vulnerable. But the question is how uh, motivated would they be to become involved in, in something like that, or would they stand back and say, this isn't my, uh, this isn't my fight? Well, our assumption is that initially they would do that. They would let, they would, um, inertia would probably rule, and they'd let the U.S. operate out of its bases, but they wouldn't be involved. But if the Chinese attack their homeland, you know, if the Chinese have launched hundreds of uh, air uh, missiles against their air bases, for example, we believe that would bring the Japanese in. All right, so how, what's the best way to avoid conflict with China? I know it's a big question. <laughs> well, the best way is to have a strong deterrent. And there are several ways we can enhance that deterrent. Uh, we recommend, for example, buying a lot more uh, long-range anti-ship missiles uh, so that we don't have to push uh, forces uh, forward. Um, buying uh, and maintaining the, the bomber force, for example, is uh, very helpful uh, also. All right. Well, Mark, nice to see you. Thanks so much for coming in. Thanks for having me on the show. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed the video, give it a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel so you don't miss out on any future Government Matters interviews.